So if you've noticed too, the way I, the way I skin these, I inverted them just like normal. And the reason for doing that is I didn't want to cut along here and try to worry about gluing that back down because I have, I'm going to try something a little different for an adhesive in the wing to make it strong and light. And I didn't want any cuts and for any, any of that stuff to seep out and get on the feather. So tried to leave everything intact. I know that I got a couple of holes. I'll probably just try to put a drop of super glue on them to cover it up. But, uh, so the way that I wire these is also gonna be a little different than my strutting birds, but it's three different wires. For this, I'm gonna use a 12 gauge annealed wire, a 10 gauge galvanized, and a eight gauge galvanized. And the main reason for that is this will give me some more flexibility in the wing as far as bending and getting the correct angle. This wire will go into the wrist. This one will go into the radius and ulna. And then this one is the one that will attach to the humerus bone and go into the body. And this is the main wire. That's why it's a lot bigger. Normally it's a, a 14, a 12, and a 10 but since it's flying i stepped it up to 12 a 10 and a 8 so this wire i cut to seven inches and i have a little ruler right here on the front of my bench seven I need two of them the 10 gauge is going to be nine inches and this is the same length wire that i use for my strutting birds and walking birds and everything else too and you'll see why when i wired this wing up and then my 10 i'm just going to cut it in half or eight i'm sorry this is the eight gauge not a 10 gauge and that's 48 inches so i'm going to cut it to 24 like I said, you'll see why this is. Ooh, need bigger pipes for that one. <coughs> so, get my zip ties. So for the twelve gauge, I'm trying to do this where y'all can see it. Get my 
in sharpened. I doubt I'm gonna try to cut this from an angle. Ooh. -y. Have a bolt cutter later. So let me get my borax out of my wing pocket. It's very imperative that inside the wing be very, very dry. Not dry like a potato chip, but you don't want any moisture pockets in there because if you have moisture in there, and you sew everything up or get everything and get adhesive in there, it'll sweat. And then it'll cause leakage and it'll cause slippage. And slipping feathers is not any fun. So I'm just gonna push these that this wing skin down a little bit. So here's my 12. It's going to go. So I don't know if you can see. So here's my wrist area. This goes my primaries. This 12 gauge wire is gonna go right under that tendon where the wrist meets the radius and ulna. Right into that little pocket where that piece of meat was that we took out of that wrist. I kind of hammered in there a little bit. And now we bend this flat with the radius. And then we zip tie it. Well, don't have cheap zip ties either, or you'll break them. Put three on it. The zip ties are just temporary. Once I put the adhesive in the inside the wing, it won't matter. Now for the 10 gauge, I'm going to drill a small hole in the back of the ulna bone. And that's the big bone on the bottom. And the reason that I don't want to just run that wire on that bottom is because where those secondaries attach to this ulna, if you have a wire down there, you could disrupt it and not put stuff back in where it goes. So that's why I'm gonna run this wire into this bone. So let me get a drill bit started to start it with. Very imperative, do not put a drill bit through your finger when doing this. Get your bone back right. You want to bend that wire to where it follows that contour. The humerus going into the ulna. Now, if you can tell, I cut the bottom of that ball off, and that's so it'll sit flush onto the body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole straight in right here on top. Right there, there's a there's a big tendon that attaches to that thing, and I'm gonna to that to this bone. And I'm gonna drill that hole right there, coming from the top and going straight down. Get my little wire bending tool. You take your eight gauge. I'm just going to guess. So I'm going to put it there. That bend needs to be about that long. And just try to bend it. It's not quite a 90 degree. It's actually a little tighter than a 90 degree angle. I don't know which one it is. but I believe I need a bigger drill bit. Yep. <coughs> Let me 
bitter still. That angle is a little bit more than 90, but when you push it up to that humerus bone, it fits square. And it's just sitting on top, and it stops right at the bottom of that humerus ball, where it, right where it goes into the ulna. Uh, now, to hold these two wires together onto that humerus bone, I'm just going to wrap it with electric tape. That's what that looks like after it's taped up. Cause I don't want that to move. And if I, if I'm twisting or whatever, and I accidentally break that bone, I need it to hold firm where it's at. So next, I'm gonna staple the flight web where it goes back onto that humor ball. And this is just a standard sure what kind of stapler gun is it just an air stapler I'm gonna grab the front of that flight web and on the other one let's see I got a better video so right here that flight web it's a real big it's a real springy material and what it does it attaches right to that wing, right beside where we drilled that hole for that other wire. If you get the skin, so it goes, there it is. It goes right back into that spot right there. So when that bird opens his wing, it keeps the tension on that flight web. We won't, that's what we want. We don't want it to be floppy. It needs to be tight. So I'm just going to take this one and staple it right back to where it goes on that wing. You might have to collapse your wing just a little bit if you got don't have a whole lot of room. But explaining why I did a three wire, because now it's not near as hard to bend right here. And it's not near as hard to bend right here in the wrist. So if I'd have tried to run this big 10 gauge or 8 gauge wire all the way through there, out of fault, trying to get it to bend right here in this wrist. Strip a couple of those feathers. somewhat level all right so i'm gonna get this other wing wired up and then we'll get it get them both put on the form <laughs> So the way that this body had its wing wires, and what I'm gonna try to do is, I've already pre-drilled out the two spots for these, where the wings go in here. Um, looking at it, it's probably gonna be, I might have to move it, but I'm gonna get both of them put in here. 
and then come back and look at it in a little bit. See if I need to move it out. I'm trying to get them both symmetrical in the same spot. That's close enough for right now. This one I'm going to slide in right there. Shaver. That looks pretty good for right now. Our scap reference is about right there. So when this comes around. So we're gonna try that first. We're gonna try that to start with. Let's see how it's if we pull this out. Pull that out. What I wanted to, what I'm trying to accomplish is a perfectly flat line from this swing right across the sh where that neck vertebra is, right on across up to the other wing. And the way it is right now, is without having that wire attached, I'm not gonna do it, but. be pretty close so and the reason I cut which I think I talked about this in the other video but the reason I cut these spots out is the angle that I wanted was more horizontal this way not more back like Callie had them so that's why I had to cut this out and I'll probably like this wing will have to wear it out on the wall I'll probably slide it out and bend it up just a little bit. I probably have to ground that out a little bit just to get this wing pivoted up to where it won't hit the wall. Uh, but that's an easy fix. So we're gonna go with that one. We'll start with this bottom one. Since it's not gonna be in interfering with the wall, we'll go ahead and get it groomed out and pinned up and then go to the next one. To start with, we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna attach, well, temporarily attach this wire. I'm gonna pull it tight and just bend it straight back. I don't wanna do too much right now because I'm gonna need to take it back off in the future. So I'm just gonna bend it flat on the body. Put a staple in it to hold it, which I might not even need the staple to hold it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put a staple in it. Okay, I need something besides a staple. Alright, so I got both wings attached right now, it's just because it was easier for me to look at them both, so. So we're gonna start with that and I'm gonna do a time lapse just so it's quicker. Um, one thing I will say, it's very important on a flying bird. A lot of people don't ever pay attention to it. But on the back side of, on the back side of this elbow, there's another flight web, just like the one in the front. It's very important to pin this flight web 
on the back side of that wing. If you don't do that, you're going to have all this floppy skin. And it doesn't matter if you're taking the wings off or if you're leaving them on. You still have to pin that flight web because that back flight web is what keeps these feathers coming back towards the body. When secondaries on a, on a bird of any kind, when they're extended, these secondaries are, do not just stay straight with the body. The closer it gets toward the body, the closer that these secondaries come to the body. And that flight web is what pulls them and gets it and covers that gap between the body and the wing. going to go sorry you can't see everything total in the frame um, it's a little better in a wider angle camera um anyway there's my my line that i got and then when i put the tail on there i haven't made my mind if i'm going to go tail Probably just still gonna go right underneath it and just let it get right there close. That little bit will be fine because they do their tail will crowd it just a little bit. That's about right. As far as this little gap, I'll put some clay or something back there to give it, or probably do some foam to let that to that last little bit of skin will rest on there. Um, so next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna groom the upper wing coverts and then spin around and groom and tape the under wing coverts before we put it our adhesive because if by chance you put an ad adhesive in here before you groom and you start grooming the stuff that i use is going to re kick really really fast so it could lock some of those feathers into place before you have a chance to properly groom them out so it's always imperative if you're going to put some type of adhesive inside the wing of a bird, groom it before you inject it. Because then I'll, I mean, even if you do mess up a little bit, it's a lot easier to fix a couple of feathers than it is to try and redo the whole wing. So... and it's a DAP black foam. Um, it's been kind of hard to find lately. Be careful which foam you use because you might get one that expands way too much and you don't want that. Otherwise, I mean, if you 
you can make it work. You just have to put smaller amounts and then as it's drying through this area, you just have to keep it pressed down, it's down top of it. Don't just squirt it in there and then go do something else because you'll be, you'll have a mess when you get back and you'll have a turkey with ginormous forearms and biceps. So a little bit goes a long way. All you're trying to do is just get enough in there just to replace that meat that was back in those radius and all those. You're not trying to pump him up to where it looks big and bulky. Uh, you know, that we, that wing was only about that wide whenever we took all that meat out of there. So we're only going to put back that much. And then we're going to come all the way out to right here. After I mount the turkey and I get the rest of the body on there. So for the time being, you know, these wings are going to come off. <laughs> Whenever I get ready to mount the skin, I'll just bend the wires back, pull them out, put the skin on there, put it through the wing holes and go back. When I do that, I will lock both of these wings in here with silicone. And then once that dries, you're not going to get them back out. And, uh, and that, that'll, you know, smooth over that area right there. Uh, so. I'm going to get my black foam, shoot my wings up. Get the wings carded if I need to card it. If something's wanting to be a little bit unruly, like those feathers right there. And then it'll be, I don't know, two weeks I'll let them dry. Because this right, the, the spot that's not going to dry, that's going to dry the slowest is in the wrist. Because there's not really going to be any adhesive in there. And you just got to let that air dry before you can work on the rest of the bird. So. I changed my mind. Instead of doing like a carding system, I'm going to tape these upper wing coverts down just to keep them from wanting to rise up too bad. Whenever you're doing this, the way this tapes on it will come up a roll. It wants to roll up on the end. Be sure when you tape, leave the tag in off from the front of the wing so it won't grab those very, very front edge wing feathers and want to pop them up. Also, frog tape. The best tape that I found to pull off X number of days or months later and not have any residue stick onto the feathers whatsoever. Not pull any residue or any of the iridescence off the feathers. I've had some issues in the past with a certain brand of painter's tape. If you're not careful when you pull them off, it'll pull the iridescence off of the feathers and it makes it just look dull but frog tape i've left i don't like to say it but i've left tape on a wing for well over a month and a half and when i peeled it off no residue whatsoever so I shot my phone into my wings and if you do happen to have a hole I thought I had one on this side but I don't see it and you now, when you mash it to try to get it packed down tight, if you see a spot where it came out, see I touched right there and I got some of that on that right there with my fingerprint. Let it dry. Don't try to wipe it off. Don't use lacquer thinner to try to wash it off. Let it dry and then you can just pop it off. As long as you don't mash it into those feathers, it'll come right back off. You don't have anything to worry about. Um... That's pretty much the whole way that I do my wings for a flying bird. Uh, it's easier this way for me. I tend to get really overwhelmed with trying to do the whole bird at one time, just the way my mind works. So when I can break them down into pieces, I can visualize it a lot better than having the whole bird, trying to put the whole bird together at one time. You just got to figure out what works for you. This system works for me. Uh, 
and I enjoy doing it. I mean, I probably if I could, if I, if a customer let me choose, it, probably every bird that I would that I did would, or every turkey I did would be a flying turkey. I just really enjoy it. So uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. Uh, the next video, I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but I got a couple of Rios to work on and a roosted Eastern, uh, and I'll probably try to keep doing some type of video uh, probably pick little bits and pieces out of each each bird and do a little tip or a trick with it so try not to keep my videos too long i know it's hard so there'll probably be a turkey series where most of it will be time lapse but i'll stop and talk about one particular particular spot with one bird and then the next bird i'll talk about something else so Hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll try to answer whatever I can, whenever I can. Um, I also have Facebook and Instagram, Foulmouth Taxidermy, to see some more of my work and message me there if you have any other questions. So appreciate everybody for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See y'all next time.